always wanted to become a doctor, but I mis by mistake I became an engineer. But my interest of medicine never died. So what, even in my engineering days, I always combined knowledge of medicine which I was gathering through books and my knowledge of engineering and building multiple devices. Once I completed my engineering, I, I joined multiple companies, worked in different, different fields, defense, industrial automation. Ultimately, I decided I can't do all this. Let me again get into saving lives through devices. But one thing I was clueless that I want to do devices, but I was not knowing that what should, what should I do. But two things I was really sure about. First thing, I don't want to copy devices from Western world and bring them as it is here. Second thing, I want to do devices which saves life immediately. I don't want to wait for next 10 days, 20 days, or even 10, 10 years to impact, impact lives. I wanted immediate impact. To do that, me and my uh, co-founder, we have spent around two and a half months in an emergency room in a big hospital in Bangalore. We have figured out so many problems by shadowing doctors, by observing them, what they are doing, and what are the gaps which they feel, and what are the gaps as an engineers or business guys we feel that those gaps are there. We, record those, we have recorded those gaps and then started solving them. One of the gaps which we saw, and currently we are, we are solving it, is to provide breathing support to the babies with respiratory distress syndrome, especially in the resource-constrained set, settings. We saw multiple cases of these babies coming from either rural areas or even from different uh, hospitals from Bangalore in different mode of transportation. Till the time they reached to these hosp hospitals, either these babies are not surviving or they have severe brain, inj brain injuries. We are talking about more than 400,000 babies every year in India have respiratory distress syndrome. And sadly, 162,000 of these babies die because of this uh, situation. But really, really sad thing that almost 32% of them die during the transportation. They don't even get a chance for a treatment. And the transportation in our country, through our study, we figured out it's not streamlined. We are talking about a baby who is on, who require ventilation support, premature getting transport in auto. We have seen these kind of cases. The current solution for this problem, which is recommended even by WHO, is CPAP, which is continuous positive airway pressure. These premature babies, their lungs are not developed well. They require breathing support to keep their lungs open, and CPAP machine does that. But CPAP machines are designed to be a machine which will work in ICU. They are, the whole CPAP system is bulky. It, it has dependency on its infrastructure, and then it requires continuous monitoring through a trained uh, doc doctors. While we were doing this uh, research, we had three endpoints uh, in front of us. First thing, whatever we develop has to work in all kind of adverse situation. Whatever we develop should not have dependency on availability of trained clinical person, or whatever we develop sh should be affordable for all kind of clinical setting. So here I'm presenting you my solution. We call it SAS. SAS is world's only neonatal CPAP machine which works with electricity, without electricity, it has a manual mode. If nothing is there, it has inbuilt battery backup. It is not, inbuilt battery backup died up, it works with compressed gas. It doesn't require any specialized cl clinical knowledge to use this machine, specifically the manual mode. I can just train you in a minute. I just need to tell you there is a pump, you just, just, just need to press it. The machine will take care of all pressure and flow parameter automatically. And we have engineered this machine to be at less, less, less than half of the cost of existing CPAP machine. And that we were able, able to do, because we have an interdisciplinary team where doctors, engineers, product designers, we all work together. And we figured out what was the most expensive part in current CPAP machine, is there are walls which convert high pressure to low, low pressure and they d deliver. The pressure which I'm talking about is uh, the pressure which we can't even feel on our palm. And if it go even 10% higher, it can rupture those babies' lungs. So we needed that much accuracy. accuracy. So one of my, my friend, he's my business partner also, he worked in uh, naval architecture, and he has used a similar technique, which was low cost to reduce high pressure to low pressure. We have used the same technique in our machine, and we are able to provide same kind of flow and pressure at same eff efficiency as existing CPAP machine. As a, as a company, Coyo Labs, we have a goal to prevent every disease or every condition which is preventable. We don't want anyone to say that 
there could have been a situation and we could save save this person. We, we wanted to make sure that we will save everyone. Thank you. <laughs>